Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Real Women, Real Purpose talk show. I am Catherine Yarbrough, and I am one of the hosts of the Real Women, Real Purpose talk show, and I am also the global facilitator of the On Purpose Woman Global Community and the creator of the Manifesting Clients Academy, and I am delighted to be here today with Mia Zachary. Hello, Mia. Hey, Catherine. I'm so looking forward to chatting with you today. I am looking forward to chatting with you as well. I've been hearing all about your new book, and I can't wait to get the real inside scoop that you're going to share with us today and the transformational message that comes that's going to come through you that I know is part of this book. But anyway, folks, listeners, I have known Mia for the last few years, and it is a delight to share her with you. She is a gentle spirit soul with a strength. With a snarky sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that, maybe that, Mia, but I, I, don't, I, I was going to say a strength and a power that come through whenever I'm in your yeah, presence. Yeah. So I so appreciate who you are and that we get to chat today. And what I also know about Mia is that she has been a lifelong spiritual seeker and she's a natural healer. She's actually created two healing modalities and her her business, I believe you call it, Elemental Abundance, is where science and spirituality come together. So I don't know if we'll be talking much about that because I know we're here to talk about a new testament to the divine feminine. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think the intention of elemental abundance also informs the book. There's the spirituality side, which is a reimagined story of Jesus's ministry. But I think I kind of went semi-science with the academics. You know, I've explained a lot of terms in the footnotes. I've explained a lot about the culture of the time that the story takes place, you know, um, in the footnotes and in some of the appendices. So I think, I think it still, I think it still blends both because I blend both. Um, you know, I am a natural healer and some people are like, what does that mean? Well, if I'm coming from the spirituality side, then I am able to perceive your aura, identify, identi um, you know, blockages within your parasymp in, in your system and help you balance your chakras. But on the scientific side, what I'm doing is in training the vibrations of the electrical impulses coming from your brain into your parasympathetic nervous system and it all comes down to the same thing. I help you stress less. <laughs> I love that. That's beautiful. And, and that was it. That was the marriage of science and spirituality in, in that little paragraph that you shared with us. Well, let's step back here because I know we're going to be talking about your new book. And it is a New Testament to the Divine Feminine. And that's actually the subtitle or part of the title, a new testament to the divine feminine. And, you know, those are big words, at least testament, divine, and feminine are big it was words. A big ask. <laughs> Trust and believe. I am aware of how freaking big this is. Um, you know, I, if you can, put yourself into my place for a moment because I know that you also are not Christian. So imagine you're at a women's retreat, minding your own business, trying to get your meditation on, and suddenly you have this appearance of these two ascended masters, Mother Mary and Mary Magdalene, and they're like, yeah, we need you to tell our story. You know, we need you to rewrite the Bible so that our voices are heard. And Let I'm me like, tell you, if what? they had said that to me, I would have been like, y'all really have the wrong person. But uh. yeah, it's like, are you, I think you're like one yoga mat over is where you're meant to be. I don't think you needed me. But, wow. you know, here's the thing. All of these ideas are out in the field of possibility in the matrix, if you will. And as Elizabeth Gilbert says in her book, Big Magic, you know, 
there are ideas out there and they're floating by. And if you don't reach up and grab it and take responsibility for birthing it, for manifesting it, for bringing it into the world, it's going to pass on to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I don't know why they chose me. I have no idea why they chose me, but maybe they didn't. Maybe I chose me. Maybe there was something within me that said, you know what? The Bible, the Christian Bible has always been super contradictory and super confusing in my brain. And I would love to have a cohesive story that I could actually see myself in. Because that's what was missing for me. Where am I in all of this? Okay, where so is let's my do... mom? Where's my grandmother? Where are my friends and my, you know, where are we in all of this? So let's take a step back for people who haven't heard anything about your book. It's a new testament to the divine feminine. It's kind of like a new Bible. Oh, that did not land well. I can I can hear the fund angelicals <laughs> screaming for my head. But yeah, yeah. I'm gonna stand today, March 14th, 2022, and own this. Yes, I have rewritten the New Testament of the Christian Bible. However, I've deliberately and intentionally drilled down under the religious dogma, under the politics, to find the core teachings at the heart of Jesus's ministry. And in my research, of course, I discovered that his message was not unique to him. It wasn't even new to his time period, which is why my book merges the Christian Bible with the Tao Te Ching and the Bhagavad Gita and the Gnostic Gospels, because these core messages of love, of treating people the way we want to be treated, of being the change that we want to see in the world is older than our common era, you know, and our common era being you know, non-Christians around the world, we still count time from one person's birth and death, and it's kind of weird, but we don't need to treat each other based on one person's opinion. And so my, my intention, my desire is to bring people together to see the commonalities and not the divisions. For me, I think religion is one of the most divisive inventions in the history of humanity. Mm. I think it tears us apart more than it brings us together. And so my desire is to say, you know, if you pick up any, you know, if you pick up my book and open to any page, every single phrase and passage that I have used is uh, footnoted so that you can find the source. But I'm very proud to say I've created a seamless story and you are not necessarily going to know which phrase came from the Bible, which came from the Tao, which came from the Gita, which came from the gospel of um, Philip, for example. It's a seamless and cohesive reimagining of Jesus's ministry from the time of his baptism until his murder on the cross and then his ascension, which is really a lesson to the reader on how you can resurrect your life every single day and ascend to Christ consciousness. Okay, so this is powerful. Yeah, that's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. <laughs> and, I, and I wanna say, uh, I, I had, I've had the pleasure of reading, I believe the first two chapters and I, and this was after I'd heard you speak about it in the On Purpose Woman Global Community at other experiences that we've been, other meetings we've been in. And I wasn't expecting all the footnotes and the, the different ways in which you, the way you wrote it that has it really come across as a spiritual text. And I, I want to say that on the one hand, it was slightly more challenging to read it because it wasn't just this flow without all that extra stuff that I kind of was like, what is that? But on the other hand, I really appreciate that that was all there 
because it speaks to how important this is, the weight of it. And I agree I, I, that what I read was seamless. It and it was a different perspective. So speak about that different perspective, if you will, the feminine, the divine feminine, or the feminine, whatever. What? Tell us about that. I want to uh, make a step back comment um, to speak to it being a spiritual text. That is not my intention. I am not trying to take anybody's Bibles any more than President Biden is trying to take anybody's guns. This is a companion, if you will. I am not asking anybody to give up their religion. That's not my place. What I'm asking is be open-minded enough to expand your faith. When this book is available in Barnes & Noble um, next month, it's actually housed in personal development and self-help. I never intended for this to be a spiritual text. I never intended for this to replace what you are comfortable with and what you believe in. I simply want to expand your perspective, your perceptions, your understanding, and then hopefully shift your behavior and attitudes moving forward. So, that yeah. yeah, your second question about elevating the divine feminine. For me, I've been doing, I had been doing Bible study with a friend in Australia for 20 years. And <laughs> after 20, yeah, after 20 years, you'd think I would understand this, this, this book a little better. And I, I didn't, I still, every time it's like, but what about this? And this doesn't make sense. And I don't understand this. And this is completely outdated because it speaks to the culture at the time. It does not feel relevant to me now. So what I really desired to do was, again, go back to that core teaching, that core messaging, and find what is timeless. What are the everlasting principles from the first century that are speaking to people of all times? And the very first thing that had to happen for me is changing the way we talk about God. Now, respectfully, you're going to see me gesture and in the book, anytime um, I refer to God, it's always going to be in, in air quotes because God is not a name, it's a title. And I think this again goes back to the divisiveness of religion. Some people say God, some people say Allah, some people say Buddha, some people say whatever they say. And even in that speaking, we're divided and it's all masculine pronouns. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I did, and you'll see when you, you probably noticed when you read the book is I've chosen the power of love as the name for our creator, for source energy, for the deity that we are referring to. And throughout the book, anytime God is referenced or anytime God is speaking, I use both masculine and feminine pronouns, and I use them interchangeably, sometimes in the same sentence, to get across the idea of breaking out of gender roles for the creator of all of us. The other way that I wanted to and, and have, have elevated the divine feminine in this book is, you know, like a bad stage play. Mary Magdalene comes into the Bible and she's like, okay, I'm here for this one part. And then she disappears, never to be heard of again. And I was like, well, wait a minute. There wouldn't even be Christianity without Mary Magdalene. So why is she so small in such a big story? So that was my other reason for writing The Messenger is it's like, I wanted to know, well, what happened to her? Where did she come from? What else did she do? What did she do afterwards? Now, did you, I know you shared with us that Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary, I believe, came to you to ask you to write this. Now, when you were writing the book, did they stay with you? Did they 
talk through you and help you answer those questions? This book was such a personal challenge because like I said, not being a Christian and having to dive so deeply into the Christian Bible as source material, I actually have 17 of them because I wanted to see how the information was expressed in different ways and then make my own so that I wasn't trampling on anybody's copyright for the, um, you know, the intellectual level, but spiritually, I'm the first one to tell you, I don't know everything about religion. I know very little about world religion. So yeah, um, the vast majority, I would go so far as to say 75% of this book was channeled because there were so many times I got stuck and I'm like, I don't know what to say next. I don't know what needs to come next. And I would hear a whisper in my ear. It's like, go look at Tau verse 46, go read Isaiah 42 too. And so I am very careful usually to say, this is our book. It's not my book. This is our book, mm -hmm. not just mine and the Mary's, but also ours, yours and mine, and any other woman who's listening or watching who, or who reads this, this is our book. Mm, that's beautiful. Well, let's take a moment here just to pause in the interview and let people know how they can get your book, our book, get our, our book. book. <laughs> I am so excited that for this month, which is Women's History Month and March 8th was International Women's Day, I am doing a very special version. So as you can see behind me, that's the original cover. Um, but if I'll share my screen in just a moment, um, for this particular version, my dear friend, artist Claudia Olivos has given me permission to use her Mary Magdalene painting as the cover of the book. And the original messenger is quite academic, as you pointed out, though I do believe if you just skip to the story part, like skip over the front end, skip over the back end, the first time you read it, just read the story. But there was more that I wanted to share and more that they asked me to share. So this special edition for Women's History Month has five currently, and there might be six, additional chapters that again speak to the divine feminine energies. And if you'll allow me, I'll share my screen right quick to show you. Um, currently it is on Kickstarter. So um, there's a link under the interview, but you can also go to kickstarter.com, look under projects, find my name, Mia Zachary, and you'll see that as of right now, um, we are, oops, woo! almost halfway to the goal of getting this printed. So this is really, um, Kickstarter is all or nothing. So if we don't get fully funded, these special editions are not getting made, but I am so thrilled. My brother David designed um, the cover of this and I just think it's gorgeous. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and the thing of it is, because this is a special edition, once the Kickstarter's over, I'm not doing this again. The additional chapters will not be available. Wow, so, so do we have to, pay a certain amount to get it. So how does, how does that work? I don't understand. We just donate whatever we want. You donate whatever you want. There are different pledge levels that give you different rewards. That's how Kickstarter works. So for example, if you're like, oh, oh my gosh, I love this project. I want to read the book. For a $30 pledge, you get the original book, um, which is the messenger eight keys for resurrecting your life. For a $50 pledge, you get the, the limited edition with Claudia's um, artwork on the front and you get the additional bonus chapters. Mm -hmm. And then there are certain levels that um, give you a little bit more. Some of the levels give you time with me that we can use for life coaching, spiritual counseling, energy healing, whatever you want. Um, but I'm really proud of the one and I'm hoping, hoping to invite people into this mission because one of the levels is called a pay it forward 
And when anybody pledges at that level, not only do they get a copy of the limited edition book with the artwork, but that also allows me to give away three copies of the original green book to three women's charities that I've chosen. Um, so I'm, I'm excited. I am, I'm truly excited. I haven't even held the new one in my hands yet, but I desire so greatly to elevate women through the story of a man in order to elevate men so that we can tell different stories about women. You know, how did they go from being our snuggle bugs to being abusers? That's beyond me. I will leave that to the social workers and the law enforcement and other people with much higher expertise than me. But one of the chapters that was completely channeled, and that's a whole nother story that my husband will have to tell you because um, he had to literally hold me through this um, while I downloaded the entire story of creation from the feminine aspect, because there are 8.7 million species on this planet. And of those, only two have males that give birth, seahorses and sea dragons. Every other species on the planet is birthed through the female. So why are we still buying into the next level bullshit story about Eve coming from Adam? Why are we still, even in cultures that are not Christian, they're familiar enough with the story, since it's written, um, I think in, I, I, I don't, I don't want to guess, I don't want to guess, but we're all familiar enough with the story that, oh, women are inferior to men, women come secondary to men, women were an afterthought born out of Adam's, Adam's rib not even biologically possible. And I do not believe that the creator would ever be out of integrity with their own laws of biology, chemistry, and physics. <laughs> so that is, it's a big, I know, it's crazy. And when I stop and think about what I've done and what I intend to continue doing, it's really overwhelming, which is why I, I desire and actually, I need, I need more women to read this book and help me with this work because we've got to change. We've got to change. You know, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to read the news headlines. What's happening in Ukraine right now is because of toxic masculinity, not sacred masculinity. What happens when I see a woman with bruises on her face running through, you know, a lifestyle that was never intended for her and her children? It's because of toxic masculinity. And I can hear, you know, the trolls already. Oh, you're a man hater. You hate men. I don't. I don't. I love my husband, but my husband has allowed his yin to be equal to his yang. And so we have a different dynamic. I love my son and I want him to grow up in a world where it is okay for him to express his emotions, for him to express his fears, his insecurities in something that is not anger and violence. I need to stop because I feel like I'm evangelizing and that was not my intention. Oh, no, 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 Mia. Passionate. I am so passionate. Yes, about speak it, speak it. You don't need to, to, please, please don't do this to your passion. Please share it because when you speak your truth in that way, I hear it in a way that I moved to action. I moved to, to, to support you and this message that's coming through you. And I 100% agree with it. I, I, I see 
uh, rooms, leaders rooms that they show on TV filled with men around the board table. I still see it. I still see it at time often. And I just go, where are the women? Where are the women? And I think that it's partly what we were trained. And, you know, I, I, I think I'm a little older than you, Mia. I was thinking about, I'm giving you a break here, if that's okay. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking just today, I think, about growing up at, during the transition. I was born in 61. So between, you know, childhood and adolescence into college was a time here in the United States where women were stepping more into careers. And I grew up with the mixed message of men are supposed to take care of you and you're supposed to be superwoman and get a job and have a family. And, a, and I can bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan and never let you forget that you're my man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and it was, it was, a it's a weird time to have grown up because that meant we were trying, we didn't know what we were doing. We did, we still don't know that we're, grow we're adults. We're all trying to figure humans. We're trying to figure out how to be, how, how to do life. But the cultural message that you're speaking to has been going on for a few thousand years, if not before that, and we're breaking free from it. And this new Testament to the divine feminine that you were asked to create and that you birthed is part of this transition and to speak it and to, to speak your truth about what you see in terms of real action and helps us to put the pieces together. And so, so I, I don't want you to do this. I want you to you. do this. Mm -hmm. And I, and I don't think it's a mistake that this came through, you know, the original experience of that meditation was in uh, April of 2019 but I dragged my feet and resisted the call um, for a for months. Um, but I don't think it's a mistake that the actual writing occurred during the pandemic, because I think the pandemic was a wide open window to we've got some real issues to deal with. And now I think not for everyone. I don't want to speak for everyone, but there were are thousands, millions of households that are like, whoa, wait a minute. This is what my wife has to do on the regular. I can't handle this. <laughs> I think we had more appreciation for our wives, for our mothers, for teachers, especially of both genders. I have to homeschool and work and take care of the rugrats all at the same time. Are you kidding me? So how can we do better? How can we love each other more? How can we treat each other with more compassion? not just kindness. Kindness can be superficial. I don't want to put it down, but it can be superficial. Oh, bless your heart. Oh. As opposed to, oh my God, I deeply and truly feel what you're going through. How can I support you? That's a completely different ask. That's a completely different intention. Um, and so that is my hope. It feel you know, the, the, the little girl in me who was told it's a waste of time to help you with your math homework. Girls are, girls are stupid. You're not going to understand science. You want to be an astronaut? Yeah, right. You know, the little girl inside of me is still afraid to speak big and to act big and in, to intend big. But I would love to start a revolution. I would love to be the first drop of water that starts a ripple that continues around the globe because our planet's made of mostly water. I'd like people to just be less shitty. And <laughs> I would, I would, I would just That's like a t -shirt. to be less <laughs> I, I think as a t-shirt, I would like people to be less shitty. I mean, what a great t-shirt. I think I think we need, to, we need to make that as a something and a and a postcard and a everything. Yeah. Great message. That's a great message. I would also like to clarify, if you'll allow me, 
When I'm talking about divine feminine energies, maybe I need to step back into yin and yang because I do not believe that divine feminine energies need to be gendered. When I'm speaking to women, I'm speaking to everyone who I self identifies as a woman, not just those of us who are cis women. And, and anybody who's watching, if I mess that up, please forgive me. I'm learning and I know I don't have it all right yet. Um, I'm not desiring for men to be less of a man. I'm asking you to be less of the men that you were taught by, by your forefathers. I'm asking you to be fully male, which means embracing your yin as well as your yang. I'm asking for my sisters not to be less of a woman, but to embrace your yang as well as your yin. We are divine and we are human and we are masculine and we are feminine because our sex assignment and our chosen gender identities are not the same thing. I'm not trying to be an expert on that topic. I just want to express that I want everybody included in my book. Mm -hmm. I want everyone to see something of themselves in here. And that's why I, I agreed to write it. Mm -hmm. That is so beautiful, Mia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to remind all of our listeners to click the link and go to. Here, I'll show it one more time. I'll share my screen. Yeah, so you see what you're looking for and recognize it when you get there. Yes, I this want to be able to give this book away. Help me give this book away. I cannot do this without your love, your your compassion, your enthusiasm. I can't give this book away, which is what I promised Mother Mary I would do at the Basilica in DC. I want to be able to give copies of this book away. Please help me do that. This is what it's going to look like. Oh, mm -hmm. and I'm going to sign it for you. Uh, so if we if we go over there and you know give uh, like let's say I go over which I'm I'm pledging to uh, donate fifty dollars and get the hard copy for this month. When when do we expect to get it? Because I know you said it wasn't printed yet. When do we get to get it? If you are most comfortable because your finances are none of my business but if someone is most comfortable donating at the $30 level the green book's already finished you will have that in April that's not an issue um, I believe that all of the chapters will be completely edited and revised by the end of April so you should have the white book the the special limited edition no later than June um, okay. I'm going to say I'm going to say June and but I really think I'm probably going to deliver it early in May, but just in case because, you know, supply chain gas prices, the trucks have got to deliver the books to the warehouse and the warehouse has to deliver it to UPS, but here's my promise. Before the feast of the Magdalene on July 22nd of 2022, you will have your book before then. Excellent. So my friends, I encourage you to go get it. As I said, I, I've had the pleasure of reading two, the first two chapters in the book. And I have to say that the images have stuck with me. The message about, I believe it was Mary Magdalene and her uh, a little piece of her life and just the reframe that was put, that Mia put into the book or she was given about that experience was it's like uh, truly unraveling unraveling a message that Good word yeah that's you know the 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 story that even i not as a christian got indoctrinated with about that time yeah and, exactly screw you pope gregory because this is all his fault uh, 
Well, I don't know about that part of it, but I hear you and you know about yeah, it. So no, I'm okay. sorry, just just for clarification, Mary Magdalene was never a whore. She was never a prostitute. That's not even in the Bible. That is something that Pope Gregory told everyone in the year 541. So 500 years after Jesus was dead, he decided, oh, she must have been the woman who was supposed to be stoned for adultery. And that's how that bullshit got started. And we are still paying for it to today in our gender, in our mm, mixed sex, in our male and female relationships, men are still indoctrinated to want a Madonna in the living room and a whore in a bedroom because of that lie. Let's read, I've retold this story. How can you retell yours? That's my challenge. How can you retell your story for your daughters and your sisters and your grandchildren? How can we be the change we want to see in the world? That is the message. Thank you, Mia. Wow. Girl, <laughs> get on your soapbox and stay there. So that's what I have to say to you. And it's time for us to start to wrap this conversation up. Is there any last words? I mean, I, I want that to be your last words because I was like, yes, but I want to give you an opportunity to. Is there any last thing that you want to make sure that you share with us before we wrap up? We are on the verge of a global change. And I believe that we are seeing this played out in the current situation. If you consider Putin as an example of toxic masculinity, then I want to hold up Zelensky as a beautiful example of sacred masculinity. That's the change. That's the goal. That's the desire. That's the message. Mm. Let's all be sunflowers. Mm. I don't get it. Did I miss something in the news? Oh, I'm sorry. So, uh, the sunflower is the national flower of Ukraine, but also going back to the science, apparently sunflowers have the ability to absorb nu uh, nuclear radiation. Wow. Oh. So it is a peace symbol in this moment and at this time. Oh, thank you for sharing that with me. Wow. Mm. Oh, so listeners, thank you for joining us here. Please comment below your thoughts, your questions, your responses to Mia's powerful message. And I will answer all of them. If you comment, I promise I will answer. Mm -hmm. Even the trolls. <laughs> Or I may delete the trolls if anyway, we'll see. Hopefully we won't have any. I don't think we will. But if we do, everyone is welcome, according to Mia. So, um, and please click the link to go over to the project, the Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Kickstarter project and give what you can. And if you're like me, you want to get her wonderful, beautiful book with the book cover and the new special edition uh, put you know, check that out. And also if you can donate so that other people get the book as well. And I want to just thank everyone for joining us for this Real Women, Real Purpose talk show live in the On Purpose Woman Global Community, On Purpose Woman Magazine and Global Community Facebook page. And tomorrow I'm actually going to be back here for a Real Women, Real Purpose talk show where I am oh, going to be- and aren't you being interviewed tomorrow, Catherine? Yes, tomorrow by Ginny. And the topic is speak like what you say matters. I I kept thinking about it today during because what you say matters, Mia. Speak like what you say matters. And you did that. You demonstrated that so beautifully. So I just want to thank you for the opportunity. I've always loved chatting with you. And this was fun, even though I got a little excited. <laughs> I love it. So my friends, if you like this energy or interview or loved this interview, like I did, please share it with your friends right here on Facebook, share it anywhere you want. I will be uploading it to YouTube in the next 24 hours. So you'll be able to go to YouTube and type in on purpose woman global community to go to our channel there. And you'll be able to get the link for this interview there as well. And you can share it anywhere. 
while you're there, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get information about all of our shows and check and check out some of the past interviews. We get to Jenny who, Robertson, who is the founder of the community and the other host on these shows. We get to interview amazing women who are real and who are on purpose. So check us out there and I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you.